Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. I know I'm looking pretty rough, but this is just summer. I mean, we spent hours outside yesterday and we've already spent hours outside today. So it's just a crazy hair, sweaty, sunburnt mess. So this is just like an opening clip, the start of a reading vlog that I wanted to do. I have a couple horror arcs that I want to get to and review, and I thought it would be fun to do a reading vlog surrounding them. So I'm going to tell you what they are, give you a little synopsis, and then I'll have you follow me around as I read these. Um, it's going to be spoiler free uh, unless I say otherwise. So, you know, if I get into spoilers, I'll tell you. But overall, this is going to be spoiler free. I've got three books that I plan on reading. Um, I'm going to try to read them all and get this video out by the time the more recent or the first book is published. Does that make sense? Um, so the first book is The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I'm so excited that I got this arc. I was really, really shocked. Um, I read the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires last, last year. Was that last year? I believe so. Love that book. One of my favorite horror books. I read Horror Store. I love that. I read My Best Friend's Exorcism a few years ago. I love that. It even made me cry. Um, so this one. So it is following uh, one woman. It, Lynette is the main character, but mostly this book is following a group of women who are final girls and they go to this monthly meeting and it's kind of like an AA setup. They've got like a psychologist who sits with them and it's just like this group therapy for these women who have been through extremely violent events and they are the final girls, the sole survivors. Um, but we mostly are following Lynette. Um, she survived a massacre 22 years ago and it has defined every day of her life since. She's not alone for more than a decade. She's been meeting with five other actual final girls and their therapist in a support group. Um, they're trying to put their lives back together. And then one of the women misses a meeting and Lynette's worst fears are realized. Someone knows about the group and is determined to take their lives apart again, piece by piece. So I've actually started this one during one of the Stacks of Strange reading sprints that we did. And I am like 10, 11% through. Uh, so not very far, but so far it's really good. The chapters are named like... Um, the Final Girls Part 2, The Final Girls 3D, like so like horror movies and um, some of the events are like similar to uh, horror movies. So one of the women um, is actually uh, her traumatic event was that she was a camp counselor. I think she was a counselor and all these kids who were closing up the camp for the season some guy came and killed them and she was the sole survivor and he claimed it was because years ago his son drowned at this camp so it's like Friday the 13th. Then we have another uh, woman who it was like her ex is um, would wear like a ghost face or what dress as a ghost or something and kill people. So Grady Hendrix is obviously... I mean, it's the final girl support group taking from horror movies. Um, and so far it's good. Lynette is um, super paranoid and obsessive about her safety, which I don't blame her. Um, but she has a panic room in her apartment. She's got all these locks and guns and knives. Um, uh, she doesn't tell anybody where she lives and just like, just to the extreme, if she thinks someone's following her, she'll jump around on a different buses until she takes a different path home. Just, I mean, I, you, you can't blame her. But it is, she is just, I, I don't know, like just type A about her security. But 11% in, 10, 11% in, I'm enjoying it so far. But I can't really say much else because I haven't read that much. Um, the next one comes out... Did I say when the final girl support group comes out? July 13th. 
so hopefully this video is up by then or at least on that day uh the next one comes out august 17th and that is chasing the boogeyman by richard chismar um this is like a mix between it's like what do they call it uh a metafiction uh, it is an ultimate marriage between horror fiction and true crime so in the summer of 1988, mutilated bodies of several missing girls begin to turn up in a small Maryland town. Um, the grisly evidence leads police to the terrifying assumption that a serial killer is on the loose. It's basically Richard Chismar uh, returning to his hometown with a curfew enacted, neighborhood watches formed. Um, he's trying to prepare for his wedding and start his writing career. And then he's just thrust into this real life horror story. Inspired by the terrifying events, Richard writes a personal account of the serial killer's reign of terror, unaware that these events will continue to haunt, haunt him for years to come. Um, I'm really looking forward to that one. I mean, I know some, some people might argue it's not horror, but I'm just going to throw it in here. <laughs> the last one comes out August 31st, and that is My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. I previously read the only good indians and it was okay and then i read night of the mannequins and i loved it so this one is another full-length novel so we'll see how i feel about it this says it's shirley jackson meets friday the 13th jade daniels is an angry half indian outcast with an abusive father an absent mother an entire town that wants nothing to do with her she lives in her old own world blah a world in which protection comes from an unusual source, horror movies. Uh, Jerry, why can I not speak? Jade narrates the quirky history of Prufrock, Prufrock as if it is one of those movies, but when blood actually starts to spill into the waters of Indian Lake, she pulls us into her dizzying encyclopedic mind of blood and masked murderers that predicts exactly how the plot will unfold. I'm excited to read about a girl who is obsessed with horror movies so this clip is already like 10 minutes oh my god so i'm really looking forward to reading these books i hope i can get this out today is the 6th of june i think i can get it done um yeah so like i said no spoilers unless i state otherwise and let's just get into the rest of the vlog so we are outside uh, drinking my normal afternoon iced coffee to survive my toddler. He's swimming and I'm reading the final girl support group and it is so good. All the calls to um, slasher films and stuff and the little excerpts about the slasher film industry and history is just so much fun. <laughs> he wanted to know what I was doing. But yeah, it's just so good. So I finished the Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. And if you follow me on Goodreads, you've already seen my review. But I gave it a four and a half out of five. I rounded it up to five on Goodreads. Um, and the thing was is I actually don't have any complaints about it, but I couldn't help but continuously compare it to the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, and I absolutely love the Southern Book Club. Um, it's probably one of my favorite horror novels of all time, so I couldn't stop myself from comparing the two, so this one I just, I just couldn't give it the five stars, but I really enjoyed it. So I already gave you the synopsis a while ago. Um, and the thing is, is I had planned on taking more clips while reading the book, but I read it in two days. Like I couldn't put it down. Eventually it hits a point where I just, I could not stop reading. Any chance I got, I was reading that book. Um, but basically this book is horror, but it morphs into like this mystery, suspense, whodunit, slasher book and it was so much fun um he definitely kept me guessing as to who was behind attacking these final girls um he kept me guessing like what the main character Lynette that we're following like what decisions is she going to make and then he made me question is she reliable 
So I, my um, guesses or like my theories and everything were just all over the place and I really like that in a book. We've got quite a few characters and that kind of added to the mystery elements because you're slowly getting things revealed about them that they've experienced in the past or like just who they are as a person in the present. Uh, and yeah, I really liked that. I liked having, we do, we have like our one main character that we follow, but we do get a lot of information about the side characters because they are the other final girls who have survived these events and we learn about the events. And then we also learn about them in the present and how they've coped with things. You know, one woman is really into, um, uh, she married a very rich man and she's really into like hosting parties and not being famous but like she is like in the know I don't know I don't even know how to explain it but hoity-toity I guess um, another woman has set up like this horse rescue so for like abandoned or abused horses and she takes care of them and she kind of lives a little bit off the grid like and then we just we just see how they've all coped over the years and we find out more and more about what happened to them in the past and it's another book kind of like Southern Book Club where you have a group of women like um, banding together and taking care of each other and being these being these strong independent women but they also are a strong unit and still need each other um, and yeah like I said if I, I really liked it four and a half stars and if you like Grady Hendrix I definitely recommend this one um, I I am going to add it to my collection eventually and I am so thankful that I got the arc and it was just, it was just a wild ride like when it once it hits that point and it just turns into this fast paced who do you trust slasher um, and then even then once you figure out what's going on it is still like just this fun <laughs> fast paced slasher I think it's going to be a great horror summer read and it has my stamp of approval if that <laughs> means anything uh, I just really liked it and I know I was really I was really amped and pumped up for it I was really hyping it up in my head so it could have gone the total opposite way and like I could have been super disappointed but I wasn't and I really I really really liked it so if you're thinking about picking it up I recommend it the next few weeks are going to be pretty busy um, just with it being summer and us spending a lot of time outside and things of that sort and having like more activities to do than just like hanging out inside uh, but my husband's working a lot and things of that sort but I am going to continue on with the vlog I'm trying not to make this super long but I don't know how people do like short quick vlogs with reading multiple books so the next one that I'm going to pick up I'm pretty sure is chasing the boogeyman by Richard Chismar that's the one that's kind of like true crime kind of thing um you can probably hear my dog panting it is so hot but luckily we're inside in the air conditioning but so that'll be that'll be the next one and i have high hopes for it i think it was probably a few months ago now i read like the first chapter and i was hooked like i was enjoying it but since i had uh, a few months it doesn't come out until August since I had a while to go I didn't continue with it because I had other things to read but yeah so that one will probably be next and yeah hopefully I, I am on pace to get this out by when I have it set to go out all right I'm back I still look a mess but it's just been quite a few days interesting days our air conditioner broke so it's been just really annoying <laughs> um and very very hot and just a maneuvering of fans and just trying to keep cool um but i did start my next read for this vlog which is chasing the boogeyman by richard chismar this is like a mix of true crime uh memoir kind of thing uh, and so basically he is talking about the murder of, um, I think it's four girls total, um, who were kidnapped and murdered when he had just gotten out of college and moved home for a little bit. Uh, and so basically the start of the novel, he's talking a lot about the town 
growing up there, the people and things of that sort. And the opening or the prologue, the introduction, <laughs> whatever they call it, is written by James Renner, who is local to me. He's an investigative journalist and I've read a few of his books before. Um, he wrote one about a case that I follow pretty closely. It was the kidnapping and murder of Amy Mihaljevic. So uh, I'd recommend that book. I'll put it up here. I think it's called Amy, My Search for Her Killer or something to that effect. But it makes sense that he wrote the introduction because his books are a lot about um, kind of have like a memoir type feel to them because he writes about the town. He writes about his perspective, what he was doing in life, just like Richard Chismar is. So Richard is talking about finishing college, moving back home, trying to become a writer, getting ready to get married and kind of like what this, these crimes do to the town. So I'm not super far into it, but so far it's really good. And he has previously written a book with Stephen King, but I can tell he's a Stephen King fan. It just feels like I'm reading something from Stephen King at points. Um, anytime someone writes about a town or their childhood in such a nostalgic type of way, it just reminds me of Ray Bradbury and Stephen King. And I'm, I'm just really, really enjoying it. And um, I'm hoping to finish it sometime this week, but we'll see. Life's still a little crazy, um, but it's really good so far. Um, it's definitely, um, from what I've read so far, like he goes into detail with the first girl that I'm learning about um, being like possibly taken or lured from her bedroom in the middle of the night and then strangled and beaten and her ear is cut off. Uh, yeah, so I am enjoying it. Uh, so yeah, that, I guess that's all I have to say for now. This is going to be quite the busy week with my child and appointments. And I, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen that I had an injury, but it's better. I went to the chiropractor today, feel even more better and um have to get my car fixed this week so yeah but this is just a check-in to say i've started the second book and it's going really well i keep trying to make this clip but people keep texting me my kid keeps yelling but i'm 60 percent of the way through chasing the boogeyman by richard chismar i'm really liking it and i think i've said in another clip or previously or something that it reminds me of Ray Bradbury, how he writes, um, how Chismar writes and describes things. And I think it's because of the nostalgia that he's writing about and like being a young boy and growing up in this small town. So when I was, I don't exactly know how old I was. I know what house we were living in. So I had to be younger than six. And like, I knew like the bike that I had and everything, but um, I was riding up and down the street in a normal neighborhood, safe neighborhood, and some guys pulled over and tried to get me to get in their car with them. And I remember, um, like trying to hurry up and turn my bike around and I was getting so scared so I was like stumbling with my bike and having a hard time turning around. And they were like, come on, come on, just come over here real quick, just come here. And like, just, I don't know, I don't remember if they were like telling me that they had something or whatever, I just remember them trying to get me to come to their car. And so I was able to turn around and rode my bike back home, just like five houses down and it's a suburb, so they're super close together. And I just went home and went inside and never told my mom about it. And, um, and like years later when I brought it up, I didn't realize that I didn't say anything to her because she was like, well, if you would have told me, I would have called the police. Um, but like, so now reading books about girls being abducted and stuff, like maybe those guys were just being like punks and like messing around or something or 
maybe something much more nefarious. I don't know, but it's just so wild that these things that happen, these bad things that happen, happen so close to home. And yeah, this is me just sitting there thinking about like these poor girls. But yeah, you probably might be able to hear Olaf in the background. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to talk about Chasing the Boogeyman by Richard Chismar. Um, I was going to do no spoilers in this video, but um, I think at the very end of this video, after my like end screen where it says like, thanks for watching, I'm going to put something <laughs> at the end. So if you get to my end screen and you don't want to be spoiled for anything, just like stop watching. But Chasing the Boogeyman by Richard Chismar. I just finished it a little bit ago. Five out of five. He's a wonderful writer. He's a wonderful storyteller. And he really like sucked me in and got me like um, really invested in the, all the different aspects of the story. So like the crimes, the victims, the police work, the lead detectives, and then Richard himself talking about childhood memories and like his family and his home growing up and his town and everything. I was just really, really invested and it was really, really well written. Um, yeah, if you like any kind of crime novels um, with a little splice of memoir or maybe if you like following like investigative journalists or writers or if you just like memoirs and like childhood memory type stories, um, yeah, I would highly recommend this one. When the reveal happens of the whodunit, I audibly gasped um, and I just wasn't expecting it. And it was just, it was so good. I don't even know what else to say right now. Um, yeah, I, if this is on your radar, definitely pick it up. If it's not on your radar, put it on your radar and read it. It's out in August. I... I really liked it and like I said after my little end screen I will add something in there because I feel like I can't go into any more details I cannot ruin it for anyone um but yeah so I've decided that in this vlog I'm just gonna have these two books so we have the final girl support group by Grady Hendrix which I gave four and a half and then this one chasing the boogeyman by Richard Chismar which I'm giving five stars um, this vlog is very long, so I'm going to do another vlog later on in a few weeks or something um, and include My Heart is a Chainsaw in that one by Stephen Graham Jones. Um, yeah, and I think in another clip earlier, I also spoke about um, James Renner, who wrote the introduction to Chasing the Boogeyman, and I highly recommend checking out his work as well, his books podcast websites he is an investigative journalist that I follow he's local to me and he has dedicated a lot of his life to trying to solve crimes um that are still unsolved so uh I would recommend his stuff as well I'll try to like jot down as many notes as I can in the description about everything I've talked about or mentioned but um yeah if you've made it this far Thank you, because this is a long ass vlog of me just like talking and I don't know. But yes, thank you for watching. I hope you picked these books up. They were great. <laughs> I will see you in my next video. Okay, so the beginning of this book, there's a note to the readers. And it says that this book is a work of fiction. Let me tell you that by the time I hit halfway through the book, I completely forgot about that note and I thought I was reading about a real crime. And I, like, like I said, I audibly gasped about the whodunit and that how and why he got away with it for so long. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then, and then like I'm reading and like 
he gets caught years later and Chismar is the only one that he wants to talk to. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is weird. And I didn't want to Google anything just in case like I spoiled something for the crime. Like I wanted it to feel like I was learning something or like being surprised. And then I get to the end and read the author's note and I'm reminded that it's not fucking real. <laughs> But it was so good. Like, he did the thing. Like, he did the thing. And this, I just didn't want to spoil it for anyone, just in case. Because the marketing literally says nothing. I mean, I guess I should have looked up the fact that they shelf it in fiction or that it's marked as fiction. But I didn't. And why would I do that when the summary says it's a mix of true crime and memoir? True crime. But it's just based off of crimes. Sim a similar kind of crime-ish. And he just ran with it. Fuck me, right? 